The catch here is you need to know exactly how you want to deal with items in your site and warehouses, in other words. So you have to tell the system, would you like to have the site and a warehouse? You have to have both. As you see here, site and warehouse are selected, but here you have a site and a warehouse. These definitions are shared across legal entity. What's the difference between this site and site and warehouse here? Both of them are required to have site and warehouse to be selected and you cannot deselect them for sure. However, as you notice on the site, the physical inventory literally says, should I be able to count how many goods belong to this site? By default, this is selected. You cannot turn it off. So that's the given. However, would you like to select the warehouse like this one? Would you like to also count to see how many physical goods do you have on hand on this specific warehouse of this site? Then you can pick and choose it. You see the difference between a site and a site and a warehouse is that both of them require site and warehouse as an active anyways, but site and warehouse also counts quantities on hand per warehouse. Why do we need that whereas not having it? Is later coming into the game when we discuss master planning. It helps you to understand how many do you have per warehouse. And because of it, if you wanted to not select the physical inventory, you wanted to only see how many of those goods have been invoiced either by your vendor or you have invoiced it for your customer. By default, financial inventory is selected for the site. Would you like to choose it for warehouse? Automatically picks and choose the physical inventory as you noted. By clicking in here, that means this wizard is not only one time used, you can always use it in order to maintain. Then I click next. Here it says, okay, you got two aisles with one special. How many incoming doors do you have? In base on my example, I'm gonna have two. So I'm just gonna put two here. And that would be IN underscore zero zero. That means it's incoming. So this is check digits I was talking about. Needless to say, if I go back a little bit, you could change this name to match what you're looking for. Like for example, you could call it LCDs, like can, ice cream, you could call it frozen. These are the aisles. In other words, you're identifying what that would be. I keep it as it is. Now here, these are the check digits that you could have a two digit random number or basically have it to be a location name. Now I click next. How many outbound doors are you gonna have? I'm gonna have three based on my slide. So I'm just gonna put three here and I click next. Now here is very important again check digits could be applied if you wanted it to I click next now as you notice this form comes up and it's gonna say look you're gonna have two aisles if you wanted it to but let's say you don't want to have two aisles let's go back here you can always go back and change things if you wanted it to go back to the beginning of all of the conversation going back to my picture let's say every single brown line was an aisle one two three four let's say i want to have four aisles so i can change this to four and then if i carry forward is actually continue with the operation and now it shows that okay you have one through four now remember in this scenario you could say from aisle one to aisle four all could be subjected for picking that means you are capable of picking goods from those aisles or maybe you say no only aisle four is capable of being picked. So you say from four to four. You could say, for example, from aisle three to four is only for picking. Or you could say one to two, or maybe all of them. How many racks would you like to have? Let's say I would like to have four racks. How many shelves would you like to have per racks? Maybe I'd like to have three or four. How many bins would you like to have? Maybe two. In this scenario, it's going to pick up the default location that I set up from parameter on inventory management, which yet you could overwrite right here if you like to. When I click next, it's gonna give me the location items. Another reason that you may wanna have a different item groups, it comes when you're selling or transporting items. You never ever want to combine within the same package a hazardous material with the consumption material, like baby food, whereas chemical cleaning. You don't want to put them together, do you? So if you think about it, it's just a matter of so many different policies and how you look at things in a monetary way or in an inventory policy way, you got to group them differently. As part of my demonstration, I like to make it shorter and I make one group for all of my products. But that is not a best practice, just to shorten the time of my lecture. I'll call it all. That means all items. Again, this is not the best practice. When I refresh it, for every single one of those account types that belong to the sales order, 
I need to associate the main account. Every single one of these activities may require a completely different account. But as I've shown you before, and I've emphasized again, I'm using one account for all of these activities when it comes to all activities in sales order. But that is not the best practice. Just to shorten the time, maybe the finance person comes and tells you what to use. This form is the most important form where the supply chain people and finance people meet and they literally link the two a specific functionality up. This is very extremely important. As I actually specify certain accounts and I'm saving the time, not to necessarily waste the time. First thing is that unfortunately the developer of this form did not give me the capability to resize this area. So I got a scroll if you see, but as I am putting something randomly, I'm explaining some of them like cost of units delivered. Like when you have delivered, how much did it cost you when you are delivering it? How much of it have you sold? How much of it have you invoiced whereas those that you have not invoiced? Later on, we're going to talk about multiple deliveries. We're going to discuss those things later on. Maybe you ordered. If you say it's not a stock by selecting this checkbox and clearing it, by clearing the stock products, that becomes a non stock item. That means like an expense. Now we're going to discuss the details of it. At the moment it's a stock. As soon as I remove it, it doesn't really matter what inventory model are you using. But if you do say a stock, then these are the available models of costing, which we have a session coming up, which we're going to discuss differences of different costing. I set up the default order setting, side the specific order setting. Remember, all of these specific products happens to be raw materials, so I'm buying them. And I will produce them by taking them to Warehouse 200 later on. Now, I got four pieces and I could have a cover, I could basically have an adapter. I try to make it as minimum as possible. So I will create one more, but this time, this specific one is going to be a bit specific and special. I call this ebook LCD. And literally this LCD of mine is going to be purchased, but happens that I apply the template. However, here on the storage dimension group, I rather choose site, warehouse, and location. And as a reminder, this specific storage dimension group does include the location. I click close. And let's say the LCD comes in each. You could, of course, change your unit. Needless to say, you could have a unit when you store, buy, sell, or when you produce. Like you buy a bottle of wine, you sell it by glass. You buy a keg of a beer, and you sell it by pint or pitcher, whatever it is. I click OK. So that's the LCD. And right off of here, I can create a case category. And new to Dynamics X2012 R3, you have the capability to create a new case category as type product case change management. So I call this ebook and I say product change case management. And as you notice, if you take a look at the information here in regard to the fast tabs, is a general ledger, is it the sales and marketing, is it the purchase, is it the service order, is it the project production, or any of these following, like family leave absent for payroll. I'm just caring about the product change right now. If I choose this, then you see the validation rules that it tells you when the product got released, when you need to basically associate the formula or activate the route version, when the version is approved or whatnot. Just make sure you assign it to some other individual and create a case for it. And right off of here, you could associate the worker to it if you want to and have the case process to have a particular information on it, like what process would you like to have on it? What service level agreement would you like to have on it? Service level agreement requires a project management to be set up. There's so many things that you can do right here, but at the moment, and these are the rules and regulations that you may have. You may want to enable, change the level of it if you wanted to, etc. But right off of here, I can actually click on a related knowledge based article and I can create a brand new one and I could create an identification for this knowledge based article, which could indeed be a document or folder or a link which could point to a specific location. Like for the demonstration, I just call it Guide to Learn, but it could be MSDN, could be your company's shared point folder or library, etc. So let's test it. I put a web address here, I click OK, and now I say demo product change case management. And now you could open the file, you could send it, you could send it to a group of people. Anyhow, this is the knowledge base article that I could associate here. And the knowledge base article indeed can be viewed. As you see here, you could associate file or folders into it if you wanted it to. Now I've associate that specific knowledge base article. Now I can go back to my product and pick and choose the release product and select my ebook. And on the engineer, I could create a case based on who is creating the case. Is it me? Is it somebody else's? 
I click new right off of here and I come back to the item and a product and this time I call it IPNS which stands for an item which is a product and is a non-stockable. I could pick and choose the item model group to be a non-stockable if you recall how did we do that by going and creating a, a specific item model group and then not selecting the stock product. Now the item group it says again what specific posting profile are you going to use which we are sharing. The storage dimension group happens to be the same and I'd like to show you also the tracking dimension group is going to be accepting a serial number for non-stockable items. I'm asking it to be serialized. We are going to see the effect on that. But one thing you notice interestingly the bomb unit is disabled. That means something very important. A non-stockable product either item or a service cannot include itself as part of a bill of material. Now if I go back to the update line and talk about the registration you notice that I could select both of them and add them here and look one of them is going to be undo the other one is going to be registered so let's go ahead and pick and choose a completely different one but pay attention that even though Sohel-123 was used as part of a serial number it never got stored for reusability that was an ad hoc usability so in one demonstration I showed you that you could have a serial number per se and never keep it again that's the ad hoc one-time use of serial number for multiple quantity or would you like to keep reusing the same serial number over and over again if I go back to the inventory on hand for the IPS2 is having 450 you got a 100 150 and 200 makes it 450 but it costs you zero because of the formula it says that the financial cost amount which happens only when you accept the vendor invoice divided by posted quantity no value whereas the IPS the on hand and it shows 100 150 and 200 450 plus zero divided by physical inventory 450 divided by 3 is 150. So as you see the formula Again, this is a counting journal. We're going to talk a lot about these journals later on. But now I'd like to go about and create a brand new item journal as type item counting. And I create a brand new one and I pick and choose the counting and click OK. I pick and choose only the LCD of mine which actually allows me to pick and choose a proper dimension. Financial dimension is already set for me. Inventory dimension has to be a proper location, which happens to be the location that I'm interested in. I don't have anything. I'm short. What I can do, go back and pick and choose this location and say, how many do I have? How many have I counted? Literally, let's say I have that many there, but we never noticed. Somebody moved it without telling the system. Let's say, hypothetically, I have 15 right there. Who has done it? Who is the worker? And I can validate it, make sure everything's good. And now I can post it. By posting, you're actually physically counting to see how many is there. So it knows exactly how many is going to be there. So if I refresh this, it knows that you have 15 here. Now, if I go back to the bill of material and do another validation, you notice that here it says for site 2, warehouse 200, location 2432, you cannot pick this up. You don't have enough of this. So let's go back here. The 2432, it was for warehouse 100. I have to do it for warehouse 200. So it's location is specific to the warehouse. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to show you the transfer journal. I'm going to go back here to the inventory management, take a look at the inventory journal. Create a new journal as type transfer. This is not a transfer order. It is a transfer journal. And by doing this, I can simply come here and say, why don't you transfer physically? We talk about transfer journals and all that. Again, later on in more detail. But let's pick and choose the transfer journal. And I click OK. What I do, I say, go ahead and pick and choose the LCD of mine. Financial dimension is set. And literally deduct 10 from warehouse 100. This location to site 2, warehouse 200, same location. So now in this scenario, if I validate this, I'm actually moving 10 from warehouse 100 to 200 within the same location number happens to be. So in this scenario, if I go ahead and post this, I'm actually transferring 10 from one warehouse to the other. So you have 5 here, 10 here. Now if I go to the bill of material, finally if I validate this, I click OK, you notice that everything is good. If again, take a look at the on hand, I don't have anything available on ebook. As soon as I post this bill of material, now I'm creating one of each ebook. By going through the on hand, I refresh it, you see that I have one of each. This demonstration was a complete overview of what is it that we're going to get into the detail of, deep dive, throughout the rest of the sessions.
So I hope you understand that we review everything again from scratch, but at least you saw the whole story from beginning to the end, and we haven't even touched the surface. By going through the pack and slip journal, similar to the product received on the purchase order, you could cancel it or correct it and start from scratch and making sure that you don't send something that is going to return back to you. Now, let's go back and talk about quality order in regard to the water. I have a bottle of water and here, once more, if you pay attention, I do have the physical quantity 47 and one is reserved. So available is 46. The quality order now is going to be checked against the pH. Let's say the value is 3. And it's going to be checked against the taste. And I taste the water, let's say. And it tastes great. But if I validate it, everything is going to be okay. And as a matter of fact, the test is going to pass. And in order to prove the concept, you can actually come here to the inquiry and create a certificate of analysis and have a logo say, we guarantee our work. It tastes great. And there we go. That's a print of the certificate of analysis, which again, you notice that in this form, the certificate of analysis happens to be a report that the, for the first one I've generated it, it indicates the ebook, as you notice. And if I move on to the next page, it's going to indicate my water. So it shows the pH level and it shows the taste level. Fantastic. This has been actually taken care of. And as a matter of fact, if I go to the on hand and if I refresh it, it actually shows that you have a quantity of 46. If I do the packing slip on this specific item, which is water, is going to be deducting it from my warehouse. You have deducted one and the quality order has been sold one. So therefore the cost of that specific product which has been destroyed is being taken care of. As part of this demonstration, I'd like to show you how to do purchase requisition, request for quotation, and creating a purchase order together. I'm going to get it started by going through the procurement and sourcing, and I start with purchase requisition. The concept of a purchase requisition is an ideology that a specific employee, which has no purchasing rights, request something to be purchased. As you notice currently, I'm in Seahorse Retailers Company. However, I have access as an admin and as an employee to be able to see all the purchase acquisition available within the entire legal entities within this organization. And it happens that there is one purchase acquisition as part of the demo data. I'd like to create a brand new one and I'd like to call it my name. Alternatively, I could select the buying legal entity and pick and choose a project of my choice, which we didn't talk about the project accounting and we don't discuss the service industries in this demonstration. But but you could associate the purchase acquisition with the project this way. I'm just going to deselect the default project. Then I click OK. And as you notice here, a purchase acquisition will be opened up. And right off of here, the requisition header is going to show who am I, why am I doing this. And right off of here, I could create a request for quotation. However, I'm going to talk about this shortly, but you have to have a business justification. You have to explain why is it that you're going to buy something. 